Everybody's excited. Why Wednesdays is back. I mean, what a great day to be alive. Malachi Brown, he's got a good block from Wyatt Pelicano. Brown, a first down and more, and out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. Shepard with the well-executed swing pass. I never ordered Chipotle online either. Oh, no, you don't do that. That's a, that is a cardinal sin. You are asking to get ripped off. Wyatt Wednesday here on the Sports Mix. Nick Verzellini, Kyle McLaughlin, and now joined by Shepard offensive lineman Wyatt Pelicano. Wyatt, how are you doing today, man? I'm absolutely fantastic. If I was any better, there would be two of me. It's Wyatt Wednesday on the last regular season game week of the season. It's the last one that's guaranteed. So, I mean, what more is there to be excited about? Yeah, and a big win for the Rams and you on uh, Saturday is. Shepard defeats East Strasburg, and uh, what did you kind of take away from the game, Wyatt? Uh, I mean, obviously it was a, it was an amazing team win uh, for us. We we executed at a high level um, and played a very very good brand of Shepard football, uh, and it, and it was enough to get us a convincing win. And it was a bounce back week for you guys to avoid losing back to back weeks. Just talk about the resiliency of this team to be able to bounce back and not give up on the season after a tough loss two weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, Coach McCook, I think, says it best. Uh, there's a there's a history here of you know when whenever Shepard takes one, and uh, I mean it happens. You know, it's it's a part of the game. You know, the losses come to, um, but whenever we take one here, uh, it, it's important to us that we we divvy out the punishment and not just the week at hand, but the previous week beforehand if we took a loss that week. So I, I think that, that was really the, the mentality going in is that we had to we had to make uh we had to make the whole peace act pay for, for what happened uh, uh two weeks ago. So I think that, that was that was an important message. Um but but we have to continue that trend. You know, we can't we can't get comfortable. Uh everybody is still gunning for us. Shepard is still the number one name on the hit list. Um Everybody wants to take us out. Nobody's excited to play us. Nobody wants to see us win. But that is that is again. I mean, guys, that's what we do. You know, that's 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 what Shepherd football is all about. Uh, when our backs are against the wall, that's when we do our best work. Why well, there was a little bit of a moment in the game where it could have been a closer outcome potentially. Is in that third quarter, um, you turn it turn the ball over back to back times. Luckily, the defense comes up with a play and gets that pick six, and that kind of shut the door. But was there any concern at that point in the game when you're up 24-14 and they have the ball on the, I guess it was 30-yard line? Um, you know, it, it, you got to try to just take the plays as they come, you know, and, and have a short-term memory with stuff like that. So, I mean, that type of energy, good or bad, can be contagious. So you, it's important to try to ride the highs, but you got to get rid of the lows. You know, so when you have a bad turnover or back to back situation, turnovers, whatever it is, right? Uh, you gotta, I think it's an important thing for us. I think we did a good job of it, of putting it behind us, you know, and, and thankfully our defense did come up and make, uh, some great plays, which again is, I mean, we won the game in all three phases and that was them doing their part to, to secure a victory for us. Um, but yeah, I don't know if concern is the right word. We were definitely aware of the situation, but we we got to address each drive with the intention to score, regardless of what what else is going on in the game. You know, we just got to keep playing each play like it's our last. And Wyatt, looking at the stats here, it's uh, another week of zero sacks allowed by the Shepherd offensive line, so that makes it now back to back weeks. For that, definitely a goal that you guys have week in and week out and now back-to-back weeks for it. Just talk to us a little bit about maybe what you feel like preparation-wise or just in the game has been attributing to having those past two weeks. Yeah, I mean, I I would say, um, you know, I would love to sit back and and give ourselves the flowers for it. Um, Seth is doing a good job of getting the ball out, you know, and I will say uh, my man James Bell is probably the smartest offensive lineman I've ever played next to. I'm pretty sure I've said that before on here. Um, but, yeah, he, he is an absolute genius, and he, he has got us covered all the way across with all of our protections, you know, so he's doing a great job with that. Uh, and the rest of us, I mean, we're, we're playing good football right now. You know, our offensive line is executing at a, at a considerably high level. We're not where we want to be at, you know, because there's still some QB pressures we got to get, we got to handle, and everything like that. But that was a, that was a pretty accomplished uh, defensive line that we had last week. So to 
come out of the game with those with the the no sack stat and our rushing and our yards per carry stat was uh, was definitely a good feeling for us. But we can't get comfortable either. You know, there's still work for us to do uh, to be better. And if we want to be competitive in postseason play, which is of course the expectation for us, then we need to we need to continue to get better and execute at a higher level than we did last week. And Wyatt, with the win, you guys are now in position where you would presume with a win you're in uh, in terms of playoffs. Don't know if you'll be at home or not, but you can only control so much with that. Um, you know, heading into this week against Mercyhurst after maybe two weeks ago, uh, dropping that game to Bloomsburg, you weren't certain where you, where you would be or if you would have this opportunity. How does it feel to be back in control of at least making the playoffs and then you'll kind of go from there um, if you're able to win this week? Yeah, it's always great to uh, be in control of your own destiny. Um, that That is uh, the best situation you can be in as a as a. Uh, in any team sport, in my opinion. But so that's definitely a, um, it's a nice feeling to have to know that we are back in control and driving our and driving our own car per se. Um, but at the end of the day, we we gotta we can't look at the rankings. We can't look at anything else. All we have to consider, all there is to consider, is that there is another team coming to our stadium on our senior night uh, on Military Appreciation Day that wants to win the football game, and that is just a, it's an unacceptable outcome for us. Uh, and we have to put our foot down and, and handle handle whatever gets off that bus. So that, that's uh, really, it, it, I think that's the best way to look at it. You know, and try not to dress it up. You got to treat each game like a game. Um, and we just got we got to win because that's the expectation. You know, so all the other stuff is just icing on the cake for me. It's a good mindset to have, especially after two weeks ago. A lot of people maybe feel like in this fan base that potentially there was some overlooking of the opponent. When it came to Bloomsburg, and some might be thinking that that could be a possibility this week against Mercyhurst, but the way you're talking, hopefully it seems like that would not be the case. But kind of transitioning that speak that mindset to on the field to make sure that there's no overlooking, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's uh, it's it's important, you know, and I, I feel like that that's got to be that's I think that's got to be the message this week um, for us as a team um i feel like that has been the vibe so far I and mean, we know we know the situation um we we are thankfully back in control of our own destiny but that can be changed you know it's any given sunday that can be changed at any moment so we need to we need to again just keep playing the game for the sake of playing the game um and we got to just play to win regardless you know you got to take the other factors out of it um and just play play for the name on the jersey play for the blue and gold because that's that's really what it's all about and just well, we got to be we got to be the best shepherd team that we can possibly be because when we are that team i really don't think that there's anybody in this division that's stopping us what have you seen from mercy Earth so far um yeah they run a good a good uh mixed bag of fronts they have a good uh even front a good odd front that they like to play I feel like they spend a little bit more time in the odd, but I'm not sure if we'll get a lot of odd with our with our pass running performances. So I mean, it's obviously it's a guessing game. You know, it goes back kind of to what I just said, fellas. You know, like we could get anything in the world. We're this late in the season. It feels like we've almost seen uh, almost all of the like college football division two defensive fronts that we're going to see. Um, so we, we there's not going to be a whole lot that they can throw out throw at us that we haven't seen before uh, at this point in the season. It's about just playing our brand of football and executing at a high level and, and not letting us beat us. And with that being said, uh, practice this week, I guess, what has been kind of the walkthrough and the vibe around practice? Uh, I think it's energetic. Um, I think that everybody knows, you know, that like, again, at, at this week, every week is a playoff week for us. You know, like it's the last regular season week. But we have to it, it, we have to secure a win to secure a spot in postseason play, you know. And even then, nothing is guaranteed. But we need to do that. Um, so I think everybody knows the situation. Um, again, we're trying to keep it playing for the love of the game. But the energy is definitely high. We got we got a lot riding on every game the rest of the season. It, it's it is do or die. So I think everybody knows that. And I really I think that we're going to be a prepared Shepherd football team this weekend. Why you mentioned uh, your center James Bell, um, one of the new starters on the offensive line this year. Him and Brandon Carr um, are the new starters, but yeah, you know, it always feels like to me, at least, you know, kind of the most most vocal guys, I guess, on that offensive line are you, Ty Lucas, and, and James. 
what can you tell us, I guess, about the tackles? Brandon Carr and Chandler Brown, they seem to be more quiet guys, at least when I'm at practice. Yeah, uh, I mean, they're they're definitely a little bit more quieter. Um, I mean, me, James, and Ty are, are old, you know, so, I mean, us three and Curtis are the oldest O-line that we have. Um, so we're all vets, so I feel like that gives us, like, or maybe gives us the obligation to, to be more vocal in our leadership and in what we're doing. Um, but those dudes are, are – absolute savages you know they handle business they are i think two of the best tackles definitely in the peace act uh if not in d2 they work extremely hard and i mean they're they should get all the respect that we do because they are they are very talented athletes and they're handling i mean they handle some very talented uh defensive ends in the peace act you know they don't get a lot of weeks off uh there's a lot of teams in this peace act east especially um are bringing some very talented edge pressure guys uh, and they do a good job week in, week out of being prepared and handling what they have to handle. Why well, this kind of a two-part question for you. You mentioned it earlier, this game against Mercyhurst on Saturday, final home game of the season. It's not only senior day, but it's also military appreciation day. So just for the two-parter, talk to us a little bit about uh, how much this means playing for the seniors alongside you for their final home game of the regular season and then maybe if there's anything uh special for you as to veterans day and military appreciation day and anybody that you might be playing for because of that yeah um absolutely so i mean senior day obviously it's super important we were playing for all of our guys though i mean it could potentially especially with our with our current ranking in the uh in the region if we are fortunate enough to continue postseason play uh, it most likely will not be at Ram Stadium. So for our seniors, this could be one of their last goes, you know, in, in, in the home stands, which is a very big deal for those guys. Uh, it can be an emotional game. So we got to make sure that they go out with a bang. Um, and we got to, so playing for them is obviously really important to us. Uh, as far as the military, I think that, I think that that obviously like Veterans Day, all of it, I'm, I'm a huge believer in, in supporting and standing up for our military. Uh, and specifically for me now, you know, with my former roommate Ryan Beach torn in the Marines, uh, I think I'm, I'm definitely playing for him. I know Malachi will be playing for him too. Uh, and it's just, yeah, I mean, it, gives, it maybe adds another emotional layer to it. But, uh, I mean, honestly, I, I put Beach's name on my tape with Malachi's every week on my wrist. So, I mean, I play for him every, t- every time I step on the field. Uh, but it, it does add a special layer um, playing for those who have served or fought or paid the ultimate sacrifice for this country. Um, it's an extreme honor to honor them, you know, and just and just to be able to to credit them for everything that they do for our country. So I, I don't think it's a, it does add another emotional level to it. Uh, it's an extremely important game on, on every phase you can possibly imagine. So we got to come in ready to handle business. And why it's sometimes eligibility, especially D two, gets a little bit hard to track. But I believe you guys only have three seniors on the roster can you share with us anything about those guys i think it's Dwayne, grantham uh zach fry and uh and samuel i believe is, is the other one Kate nah, cedric O'Fori is okay. that last one okay. yeah and he, he's yeah they're all three awesome guys you know um Dwayne grantham he, he's a local dude you guys know him very well he's a martinsburg cat uh, i mean he's given a lot to this program uh, he's, he's an extremely, extremely talented athlete who uh, who's amazing at the sport that he plays. Um, and it, it's, it's going to be an honor to see him and, and get to share that moment with him. Um, and, and with Cedric, it's the same thing. You know, he's not from around here, uh, but he, you know, that's my, that's my good man. It's me and we're both Giants fans, so we suffer. We suffer in silence together, the both of us, uh, throughout most of the football, NFL football season. Um <laughs> But he, he's a great dude, too. He gives so much to this program. That dude is not a lot of people on this team are working as hard. Or he, I don't think anybody's working harder than him, but not a lot of people are working as hard as Citric is. Uh, that dude is working every day to get better at his craft, and uh, he, he just does he does so much behind the scenes for this program and on the field. You know, So he, he's a great teammate that will dearly be missed, and, again, it'll be a special moment to share with him. And Zach Fry, I mean, that dude is – I think that that dude is the best at what he does in Division Two, if not Division One, in all the college football. I mean, that dude does not miss a snap. Uh, he is he is the man. He says he is. What more needs to be said? Uh, and again, it'll be very special and emotional for me to share that last moment at Ram Stadium with him as well. All righty, wide appreciate the time as always, and good luck this week against Mercyhurst. Thank you very much, fellas.